Hello, good day viewers. This is the continuation of our lesson on how to split compound fractions into partial fractions. Throughout in this topic, I shall only be discussing based on three components of fractions. The first one is when we have repeated factors uh, under the denominator. The second one, when we have non-repeated factors. And the last one is when we have the degree of denominator greater or equal to the degree of the denominator. So I have two problems here which I want to resolve for today. Let us start with the first one. Uh, this is a fraction, but if you look at the denominator, it is not written in factored form. Hence, you have to factorize it first. So we can rewrite this as 2x minus 3 divided by you can see we have x in both of these two times, so we can factor x out. Then inside we have x, then plus 1. This is our factorized form of fraction. And you can see we only have two factors, and hence we are going to obtain only two fractions. And each of these factors are linear factors, and therefore their corresponding numerators are going to be constants. So this is equal to a over the first factor, which is x, then plus another constant, b, over the second factor, x, plus 1. If we apply cover-up method, we are going to start with the first one. Uh, we are going to think of the way to transform this denominator into 0, and it can only be done by setting the value of x to be equal to 0. So if x is 0, the denominator is going to be 0. And we are going to substitute that 0 into the other factor. You can see if we substitute 0 here, we have 0 plus 1 is equal to 1. And we have 1x, which can also be written as x. Then to the top, we substitute 0 to the top. You can see 0 times 2 is 0. Minus 3 is minus 3. So we have minus 3 to the top, minus 3. Then plus, you move to the second one. To transform this into 0, we have to set the value of x to be equal to negative 1. Negative 1, positive 1 is 0. And that negative 1 has to be substituted in the other factor, which is x. So we have negative 1. So this will transform this into negative. Our denominator, x plus 1. You know that value is 1, so it will not affect this. Then substitute that negative 1 to the top. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Then negative 2, negative 3 is negative 5. So we have negative 5 here, which can also be transformed into positive because we have two negatives. So this becomes positive. And hence, this is our partial fraction of this compound fraction. And this is not the only way to find this constant. Let me show you the other way. The other way is by multiplying each time by the factors under the denominator here. So multiply this side by x times x plus 1. You will be only left with 2x minus, minus 3. And if you multiply this by these factors, you are going to obtain a x plus 1, because this x will cancel this other x, then plus. Multiply this by these two factors. This x plus 1 will cancel this, leaving only this. So we have only bx. 2x minus 3 will be equal to, if you expand this, you obtain ax plus a plus bx. Again, let us bring those with x together. So we have 2x minus 3. This is equal to, you can factorize it as a plus b. Then you bring x out, then plus our a. So by relating the coefficients, you can see the coefficient of x to the right is a plus b, while the coefficient of x to the left is just 2. So we have a plus b equals 2 while a here is equal to the constant, which is negative 3. So we have a 
equals negative 3. If a is negative 3, you can substitute it back here. So we have, instead of a, we have negative 3, then plus b, this is equal to 2. To find b, you take negative 3 to the right. We have 2 plus 3 and b equals, equals 5. And therefore, the values of a and b are negative 3 and positive 5 respectively. And you can substitute them back into this expression to obtain the partial fraction of this compound fraction. So we can write this one as our a, you can see it as negative 3 over the first factor x, then plus our b is 5 over the second factor, which is x plus 1. And this is our partial fraction of this compound fraction. So now let us look on to the last example. So here is our next example. Um, you can see the denominator is not written in factored form. And hence, we have to factorize this quadratic function. To factorize it, we have this is equal to 8x minus 28 over, we're going to obtain two factors. We're going to think of two numbers, which when we multiply them together, we get positive 8. And when added up together, we get negative 6. And the numbers are negative 4 and negative 2. Because negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. Negative 4, negative 2 is negative 6. So this is what we have to resolve to partial fractions. All of them are linear factors. Therefore, their corresponding numerators are going to be constants. And because there are two factors, we are going to obtain only two fractions. So the first one is going to be a over the first factor x minus 4, then plus another constant over x minus 2. Let us start solving this by cover up method. We have our first fraction x minus 4. Our second fraction, x minus 2. Let us first of all consider this. To transform this into 0, x must be equal to 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. And we are going to substitute that 4 into the other um, factor. If x is 4 here, 4 minus 2 is 2. So we have our 2 here. Then to obtain the top number, we are going to substitute that 4 here. You can see 4 times 8 is 32. Then 32 minus 28 is 4. So we have 4 here. Plus. The other factor is x minus 2. To make it 0, we have to set the value of x to be 2. So that 2 minus 2 is 0. And that 2 is going to be substituted here. We have 2 minus 4 is minus 2. So instead of plus here, we have minus 2. Then to the top, we have 2 times 8 is 16. Then 16 minus 28 is minus 12. So we have this becomes positive, and we have 12 here. This can also be reduced into, because 2 can go into 4 two times, so we have 2 over x minus 4, then plus 2 can go into 12 six times, so we have 6 over x minus 2. And these are the partial fractions of this compound fraction. Let me show you the second method. We are going to multiply each of these times by these two factors. The first one, if after multiplying by these two factors, they are going to clear up, leaving only the numerator, 8x minus 20, 28. And this is equal to this multiplied by this. This will be taking care of this, leaving only this. So we have a, x minus 2, then plus the other one. This will cancel this, leaving this. So we have b multiplied by x minus 4. Let us expand them. This is equal to ax minus 2a plus bx, then minus 4b. 
This is 8x minus 28. Let us bring those with x together. Uh, we can e equally factorize them. So we have a plus b, this and this, all multiplied by x. And the constants we have minus 2a and minus 4b. And to the left, we have 8x minus 28. By relating the coefficients, you can see a plus b, a plus b must be equal to 8. The coefficient of x is a plus b, the coefficient of x here is 8. And the constants here we have minus 2a, the minus 4b is equal to the constant here, negative 28. We can solve these two equations simultaneously. We can equally multiply this equation by 2 so that we can eliminate a. So to do that, you can multiply all of them by 2. So here we have 2b and here we have 16. Now we can add these two equations together. This plus this is going to be 0 and this plus this is going to be minus 2b. And this is equal to, this plus this is going to be uh, negative 12. To find the value of b, we divide both sides by negative 2. And you can see it here, that b will be equal to negative 12 over negative 2. And b is now equal to positive 6. Having obtained the value of b to be equal to uh, 6, we can substitute it back into this equation or this equation. But initially we have a plus b to be equal to 8. This means that a plus b is 6 now. This is equal to 8. If you take 6 to the right hand side, we have a equal to 8 minus 6. And a now will be equal to positive 2. Uh, we can substitute then back into this expression to obtain our partial fractions. You can see a is equal to 2, while b is equal to 6. And these are the partial fractions of this compound fraction. And this is all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. Do have a nice day.